Aloha, everybody, and welcome back to part 11 of Sonic Lost World. We're still going through Frozen Factory, and now we're approaching Frozen Factory Act 2, which is a little gimmicky. And we're going to be meeting another of the Deadly Six. Why are you still here? I'm just getting ready. Well, you seem to be taking your time. Well, it is my time to take now, isn't it? But what if I told you that you were the only one I trusted to be fast enough, oh. smart enough, mm -hmm. and pretty enough to beat the Blue Nuisance? Well, I'd say you got the right girl for the job. Well, that was so easy I almost feel guilty. So folks, in Act 2 of Frozen Factory, Sonic covers himself in a whole bunch of snow and becomes a gigantic snowball, and we spend the entire level rolling around as a snowball. I don't know why Sonic does this. <laughs> Maybe he sees all of the various rail loop-de-loops that he's going to have to come across, and he figured, well, I better roll myself into a giant snowball if I'm going to get through that. But those are pretty far in the distance, and I, I I don't know. It's just an excuse to have a gimmicky snowball level. <laughs> With this section, I have to get all the billiard balls into the holes, otherwise I don't get a red ring. Every single one of them counts. Aww. It's cute the way he keeps on trying to get past all the death traps and enemies and stuff. I think he kind of likes me. That first puzzle wasn't really that hard, I barely moved the snowball that much, but the second one coming up is one a lot of people have many frustrations with. I guess a lot of people have frustrations with this entire level, but to be honest, I don't really see why. For one thing, when you're playing around as a snowball, all you really have to do is move the control stick to move the direction you're going, and push the jump button to jump. You don't have a double jump. Uh, you can do a spin dash while in snowball form, but with these narrow platforms and the fact that you can fall into a bottomless pit rather easily, you don't really want to do it unless you're on a planetoid or if there's a big burly yeti that you want to knock out of the way. Or are they zeti because this is the lost hex? Are these things actually the same species as the deadly six? I... I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, I really don't think it's that bad. When the cluckers try to blow you with wind, it's easy to just push back against the wind and stay on the platforms. Um, it's not motion controlled, you know, you just move the control stick, nothing motion controlled going on here, it's not like you're moving around with the boulder power up in Super Mario Galaxy 2, and I just don't find this really all that difficult. The pathways are very basic, the things you're dodging or running over are very basic. Uh, I don't have problems with this level at all. It's different, it's not like Sonic at all, but screw it. <laughs> it's not annoying or a freaking frustrating to play. And even the big Yeti, Zeti, whatever, they're easy to take care of, too. It's just when you're trying to get the red rings, it can be treacherous because you have to make a lot of jumps. And you have to deal with the billiards puzzle coming up. So I have to get all of these billiard balls into the holes, which means I have to tap them, and then they're probably going to go right into their destination. But it's so easy to just miss one of them. Like, oh, that stupid eight ball! So I purposefully jumped into the pit and killed myself because I missed the 8-ball. That means I don't get the red ring. Now the other thing that sucks about this is it's not easy to kill yourself. It's actually very tricky to jump off like I did earlier. I missed that ball, so I know this is a bust. I'm going to try killing myself, but I can't. The booster pushes me and uh, I almost hit the checkpoint. <laughs> I had to pull back on the control stick quite a bit. I'm like, no, 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 I'm dying. We're going to try this again until I get it right, goddammit. And I didn't cut any of it out. I showed how many attempts... I missed one. <laughs> I showed how many attempts it takes me to get the red ring in this stage. So a lot of people don't like this particular red ring just because it's so problematic to collect. But, uh... And this game does have a live system. I do have 54 on hand right now. That's a lot of retries. But if you have six going into this level and you're trying to get all the red rings, well, you better farm some lives, honey. But, you know, just like that, 
I don't really find it that bad. It just takes a little careful placement and it took me like four or five tries. Keep in mind I've done this before on a previous playthrough, but you know, it's nothing too crazy or bad. I think this particular level handles perfectly fine, honestly. This is the hardest part of the level right there. And it's over. <laughs> The hardest part is just when you're kind of zooming fast with very narrow ledges, but I find it's really easy to guide this thing with the control stick. It's not too heavy, I can always get it to where I need it to go, and I love the music, Frozen Factory 2's theme is so good. I love the aesthetic, I've always been a sucker for nighttime winter levels, and this level is no exception, I just love the music. It's Frozen Factory 1's music sounds like it belongs in Sonic 3D Blast or something, it's just, ah! I love winter, I love the Aurora Borealis in the background, it's, ah, I love it. Oh, you're adorable. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is Xena, the only female Zeddy of the Deadly Six. And this boss fight is actually kind of time-consuming, depending on how you handle it. This isn't one where you can just charge into her with three or two homing attacks. I have to hit her three times as a snowball, and here's how this works. Xena is hiding in one of the snowmen, and it's always going to be the last of the regular snowmen. It's not predetermined. It's not like she's in one of them right now. She'll always be in the exact last one that you take care of. But there are snowmen with bombs on the top, and if you hit the bomb snowmen, it resets the entire puzzle and Xena hides with an entirely new setup. So you can't screw up and hit the bombs like I just did. Now the puzzle's reset, now I gotta wait for Xena to spawn new snowmen, and she'll always be in the last one that isn't a bomb. So I have to take care of the non-bomb ones, and it's easy to do with a spin dash, but it's not really easy. It's really easy to screw up, and if you take too long taking out these snowmen, then Xena will reset the puzzle again, so it's like, ugh! <laughs> you have to be kind of fast with the spin dash. There's no real way to die in this boss fight other than time out. Like, we still have a timer in the top left, uh, but, like when my uh, ring count and stuff shows up, but, yeah. Gotta go. Call me. Oh, Xena, give me your phone number and I'll call you any day. But, uh, it's a little tricky to get used to, but it's nothing too bad, honestly. Ooh, that was cool. Pun entirely intended. are impressive, little hedgehog, but you are destined to fail, as the fat fool has failed before you. I'll get fat from eating your black hearts, you Eggman wannabes! Whoa! Your threats are almost as amusing as your mustache. I must commend you on your invention, though. We get stronger and stronger as we leech the life from your dying world. Yeah, I've noticed. But where are you gonna live when your world's dead, guys? Alright, you've been dead too! <laughs> too bad for you! <laughs> I will burn your world, you rebellious scum! I will destroy everything you love and make you rot! No! 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 <laughs> Boss, your hands! As long as I can still strangle a Zeti, my hands are fine. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Eggman is mad. I'll get fat from eating your black hearts. Good lord. Anywho, folks, we're moving on to Act 3 of Frozen Factory, the Wii U version. I'm not playing the 3DS version yet. You'll have to wait till the next video, but, uh... Yeah, we're in a winter wonderland, Frozen Factory, and the third act of the Wii U version is a casino level. <laughs> I guess uh, the Lost Hex has gambling. And they happen to know about Sonic the Hedgehog. Did Eggman build this place when he was setting up bases in the Lost Hex? I mean, it's the only way I can explain why the slot machines have Sonic tails and Eggman's faces on them. Other than the fact that this is a direct Casino Night Sonic 2 callback. And, uh, we're not tired of casino levels. Nah! No. Even though we've had them in Sonic 4 Episode 1, and Sonic Generations, and Sonic Heroes, and Sonic Adventure. But let's have some more casino, why not? 
So when you get into these pinball sections, you have to get a certain amount of points before the exit will open up, and then you can move on. And yeah, you have to go through the exit because if you fall down the middle, if you fall into the hole at the bottom, you die, you lose a life, and then you have to retry the pinball machine all over again. So uh, this is a deadly pinball game. It's not just for fun. You have to play it well, otherwise you will lose a life. So uh, that's a little tense. But that pinball machine's not too bad. You just have to get into that area very easily, you know. It's the one I'm coming up to that has a red ring. That one can be pretty annoying. But this place is filled with bumpers. I'm trying to get a red ring here. It's above this particular bumper, but I won't bounce directly up. Even though I, I did it in my test playthrough, so I'm just like, bounce! I, yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh no, watch out for that very slow wheel! <laughs> Which again, has Eggman, Tails, and Sonic on it. Classic Eggman, even. And, uh... Does the Lost Hex know about Sonic? Do, does anything live on the Lost Hex? Like, I know that Zomom has a mother because he directly references his mother in a line of dialogue. <laughs> Mom was right. I'm a failure. <laughs> but, um... I'm very interested in the Lost Hex's, you know, universe. Because apparently it's a floating continent, sort of like Angel Island, but nothing is really making it fly like the Master Emerald. So it's flying for no reason, and I guess there must be other Zeddy, right? I... I fuck! Every time I play pinball in these goddamn Let's Plays, I always consistently get three Eggmans. What the hell? <laughs> what the hell is going on? My luck is terrible in these pinball games. Like, oh god. Huh. <sighs> but, uh... I'm doing this pinball machine. You could skip this and just go through the entrance and miss this pinball completely. But I need to get all the way to the top because there's a red ring. And keep in mind, if I go down the bottom, that makes me lose a life. And something interesting about Sonic Lost World, um, if you die like four or five times in one spot, they actually spawn a helper capsule right in front of you to let you skip to the next checkpoint. Yeah, Sonic Lost World is kind of like some of the other Mario games, where, like, if you're dying too much on one particular location, the game offers you a cheat. It offers you a way out and says, Hey, you seem to be having a lot of trouble with this section. Why don't you grab this wing capsule, and then you can move on to the next checkpoint. And normally that doesn't bother me with the other levels, because I can just choose to skip it if I so desire. But with this pinball... If you die five times in this particular pinball machine, it is so easy to run into the capsule that spawns right in the center of the flippers. And then you have to go to the forward checkpoint, and then you don't get to get the red ring, so I have to restart the entire level if I die five times here, but... It's really annoying trying to get to the top of this particular pinball machine, because the angles are just too... They're not good angles, you know? It's very tricky getting all the way to the top here. So while I am collecting a lot of rings, and I am getting extra lives with those rings, it's just time-consuming and ah. Uh. Where's Donnie? Why isn't Donnie playing this? <laughs> Why didn't I call Donnie? Either way. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very interested in the Lost Hex. There must be other Zeddy besides the Deadly Six, right? Where are these civilizations? We never meet them. We only meet the Deadly Six, we don't meet any other Zeddy, so... Are they all evil? Are the Deadly Six the exceptions? Are there good Zeddy? Who knows, because we never really meet anything in the Lost Hex, which is like... There's so many unanswered questions about the Lost Hex that I have, you know? <laughs> Where are the civilizations? Why is this chunk floating in the sky? I, I don't know. But uh, we met Xena earlier. Xena is a warrior princess who may be a lesbian. Um... <laughs> oh wait, Ron Xena. But uh, the Deadly Six Xena is voiced by Stephanie Shea, and uh, she's a very vain character. It was very easy for Zavok to manipulate her into going after Sonic. She's obsessed with her appearance. She thinks Sonic's shoes are gross fashion. <laughs> How ugly retro, ah. Uh. And, um, a lot of people don't like her character. <laughs> you see, it would bother me if she was, like, maybe a good character? I mean, specifically a good 
person, like a good guy, like one of the heroes of the story, but she's a villain, and so if she's vain and... Camera? Camera! Ah! Uh. <laughs> that red ring was kind of annoying to collect, but, uh... If Xena was a good guy character, maybe I'd find her personality really off-putting, but... It's just kind of an easy trope to do with a female villain, that's really my only problem with it. She's the villain, she's supposed to be despicable and obsessed with looks, and yeah, I don't really care all that much. But yeah, folks, that was the casino level. Come back for part 12, because we're going to do the worst level in the whole entire game. What were they thinking? See you then.